it's not a linear line. It is like right. the stock market. It goes up. It goes down. The journey is not like this. It's yeah, it's like this, right. One thing, so I'll get right into it. Number one on my yeah. list of things to kind of like help you overcome a negative slash lack of confidence mindset is creating perspective of the journey, right? Yeah. Creating perspective on the journey that you're on. So what does that mean? I like to sum this up as don't, you, no one wears heels when they're going hiking. That's <laughs> That's the best summary, okay? And what does that mean? If you are planning a hiking trip, Right. You are not going to be wearing like your plan is to wear nice hiking shoes to go because you know the terrain is going to be rocky along yes. the way. Now, if you didn't know you were going, how you thought you're going on a work trip or just hanging out with your friends, going to the bar, you might wear heels because the expectation of what you're doing is significantly different. Right, and that's where a lot of people have trouble is their expectation of what they're trying to do does not match the reality of what's actually going to happen. I think that's right. where the negative cycle happens. That's where people give up, they quit, they're done, they get frustrated, and, and then they start over in six months because they found a new fad diet or whatever it might be. So that's yeah. my first part is creating perspective on the journey. So what does that mean in terms of fitness and nutrition? If your goal is just use the avatar of losing 40 pounds, okay? That's going to be kind of the how I talk about it. Okay. If your goal is to lose 40 pounds and you say, okay, I'm going to lose one pound a week for 40 weeks, which is a very reasonable goal. Now, right. in your mind, you're thinking, let's say you weigh 200 pounds, okay? So you're trying to get to 160. And you're in your mind every week, 199, 198, 197, 196, right? And you might weigh yourself daily. And if you yeah. do that, in, in your head, it's like 199.8, 199.6. And like you're going to do that daily in your head, right? So we think linearly on progress. But the reality of weight loss is that, number one, the body doesn't want to do it, doesn't like change. I talked about before. Yeah. And it's not a linear line. It is like right. the stock market. It goes up. It goes down. The journey is not like this. It's yeah, it's like this, right? And the key is consistency with that, which is a whole other topic. But if you can plan, so if you don't plan for negatives, right? So let's say you lose five pounds in the first five weeks. You're feeling great. It's working. You're on schedule. And then you had a wedding that you forgot about. Then you had, then your friends, hey, it's my birthday. We're going out. We're going to Buffalo Wild Wings. We got to eat. You have some wings, right? And next thing you know, on Monday or whatever your day is to weigh yourself, which I don't necessarily recommend generally, but let's just say that's what you're doing. Yeah. You're, you're up a pound. Well, now you're only down four pounds in five weeks. And then maybe you don't lose a pound the next week, right? And then, right. And then seven weeks go by and you're only down eight. Like it's one of those things where, and after 12 weeks, you're only down seven pounds. And now yeah. what? Now you're like, oh man, like I'm five pounds below. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, is this working? And then maybe in 15 weeks, you're only down seven pounds. And, and then you're three weeks of not losing any weight whatsoever. Right. right? When you go into the goal and don't realize, and, and this happens to you and you don't prepare for it, it's yeah. bad, right? It sucks. Like, man, I'm only halfway to where I should be at currently, which means it's going to take me even longer to hit my goal. It's already going to take me 40 weeks to do it. Like, and that's when the negative, is this worth it? This is stupid. What am I doing wrong? Then you start looking, how do I, like, having trouble losing weight and I'm not, you know, all these different things. Yeah. But the reality is that the, the issue you're having at week seven to week 15 was actually always a part of the journey. Yeah. You just didn't account for it. Right. right. It's like it's like paying a bill that was always there. Like, oh my God, I totally forgot I have Netflix. I gotta pay yeah. that 50, that 20, whatever that crazy number is right now, that's 20 yeah. bucks a month. And but that was always there. You were watching, you just forgot you had to pay it. Right. Same concept applies here is the the obstacles in your way are always there. You just didn't have the knowledge and understanding that it was gonna be there. And now that you're facing it, you're all negative because you didn't realize you had to plan for that. So the reality yeah. is you should have planned to lose 40 pounds in 55 weeks versus 40 because of pitfalls. Now, again, that's a very broad example. But right. the overarching concept is that when you plan for things to go wrong, you are going to be less negative because you already knew it was going to happen and you already have a plan in place for it. And right. that is my first tip is plan for things to go wrong. It's never going to go perfect. I and if it. you know going into it that, okay, if my I have a weight loss journey, I know that I'm not going to lose a pound a week or a half pound or two pounds, whatever the goal is. Yeah. I know I'm going to build that into the program. I'm going to be able to predict the exact week it happens. But if yeah. you build it into the program, 
you're going to feel so much better and you're going to be way less negative because you accounted for it. You knew it was going to happen. Exactly. Exactly. I love it because we don't really ever account for it. You know, we just, it just, we do it. And then we we're like, oh shit, you know, oh my God, you know, for the, you know, like, I'll give an example. I went out with friends during, we, we celebrated, we had some, we had some drinks and then all of a sudden I went on the, I went on the scale because I have this neuroticness. I always have to weigh myself, which is the worst thing to do in the world. Terrible. And I get on the scale and I'm three pounds up. I'm like, oh, you know, and I know that in a couple of days, it's going to go, it's going to drop down to my original weight. But at that moment, it's like, you know, you don't plan for it. And then it's like, you're like, oh, now I got to wait three days. I got to eat well. I got to make sure I do this. So it goes down and then you're all stressed out at all, you know, and it's, it's, it brings in that negativity, you know, and it's like, it, you know, it, you really have to like, you know, really plan, like you said, put into your head that not, life is not perfect, that you, that you will have your ups and downs and, you know, and we're meant to, we're not, you know, you can't be on carrots and celery the whole lot, your whole life. You have to eat a healthy diet and, and plan to have a little fun too. That way you could actually st stay healthy because I think when we try to be too good, then we get sick of being good. And then we go back to a really unhealthy way of living. Yeah. I mean, people always, it's funny because as a trainer, I go out in public, which is crazy. And everyone's like, oh, you can have that slice of pizza. Oh, you, you can have that donut. I go, I don't think you understand. I eat worse than you because <laughs> 80, 85 percent of the time I eat way better than you. And when I want to go out and have pizza, have a burger, have, you know, whatever it is, mozzarella sticks, donuts and cookies are kind of my vice. And yeah. I will I will now again, I can overeat too. I binge eat. You know, no one ever has one munchkin donut. You have 10 or 15. And that's what I, yeah. I do. The same thing. I have a big sweet tooth. The difference is I eat awesome the other 85 percent of the time and then when i want to eat like crap i can't i have the full ability and i don't you know i don't work and because i have the maybe i, I maybe have a di different discipline set but because i have the knowledge and understanding of like i'm not going to weigh myself i don't care like it's one of those things where i don't care about the scale anymore yeah. i look at i look at it for trending data but i have that knowledge base to understand like okay this is what it's going to be like here's what i'm doing and i know if i eat this there's going to be a negative consequence. I'm going to feel lethargic. I'm going to be more tired. I'm not going to have a, for example, if I go out on a, let's just say Saturday night and mm -hmm. I drink a few beers, have pizza. I know for a fact that if I go lift on Sunday, let's just say I'm doing a bench press. I know for a fact that it's going to be significantly harder to do the same as I did last week yeah. when I stayed in, had a great night of sleep and, and had ate really healthy, right? There, like, there's a huge difference there. Yeah. Now, we don't track that. But I, I mean, I, I, I can feel that because like, oh man, why did I do five less reps this week on bench press than I did last week at the same weight? That's ridiculous. Like, am yeah. I weaker? Am I, am I, you know, again, if you don't prepare for it, am I weaker? Am I not doing this? Do I, do I need creatine? Do I need to get on? Like, what do I need to do to, to make this work? It's like, or, or you slept poorly or you ate like crap or you drank or, you know, it's just not your day. It's like, there's so many different reasons for it. Yeah. So that's the idea is I'm able to prepare. And so I don't get, again, Am I still negative? Of course. I think negativity is part of how we do things. So to say that you're not going to be negative, I think is very disingenuous. Yeah. Maybe if you're a monk or some guru out there, it's just not me. But I can at least mitigate how that feeling can disrupt what yeah. I'm trying to do. And therefore, I can continue without feeling too guilty, without having too much regret. And just know yeah. that this is part of it. Keep going. Now, if you're never seeing results then we have to talk about what you're actually doing and change things up. But right. again, for those of you who are on the right path and doing it, that, that's the first piece of advice I would give you is start preparing for it. Right? Don't let little things like this get in the way. Prepare for it. And if you don't know what to prepare for, just say something bad is going to happen or something negative that I don't want is going to happen, I'm ready for it. And just mark it off when it happens and, you, and add three of them to your list. You don't have to know exactly what it is, but you can plan for at least something yeah. to happen. I agree. Oh, I agree totally. I I think that's a great way of looking at things. I think it it's a it's a positive way of looking at things, and it prepares you. You know, so you're not if things don't go perfectly, and and you go up or down, and you you know you know that is part of life. So you're not going to get yourself overwhelmed by it. I think that's a great 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 idea, great concept of of viewing things. Well, thank you. I actually thought of a good example. If you're driving to work mm -hmm. and it takes you thirty minutes without traffic to get to work. Right. How long are you going to give yourself to get to work? Right. The answer should be about 45 minutes, right? Give or take your area. Because if, if there's no traffic, you're golden. But if there's one thing that happens, you are screwed and you're going to be late to work. And now, you, and now you're five minutes late, whatever happens. So yeah. you always want to build in buffer when you're traveling. 
that the same exact concept applies when you are trying to get in shape or eat yes. healthy or whatever, same concept applies. That's so true. That's so true.